हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम वंस अगेन एट दिस वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग लेक्चर वी आर हैविंग एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट अ कप ऑफ टी अ शॉर्ट स्टोरी रिटन बाय कैथरीन मैंसफील्ड डियर फ्रेंड्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रेजेंटेशन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द स्टोरी द समरी ऑफ द स्टोरी द करेक्टर्स एंड ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स आई होप यू विल एंजॉय दिस लेक्चर एंड प्लीज केयरफुली वॉच ऑल the aspects of this lecture okay before talking about the story let's talk about something about the writer katherine mansfield you can see katherine mansfield her original name her birth name was kathleen mansfield buchan and she was born in new zealand she was born in new zealand and uh, uh, from new zealand she then shifted to england and in england basically she is hailed as a pioneer in the genre of short story in the 20th century dear friends short story is relatively a newer genre in english literature uh, i Here, it used to be a very you can say a part time job and writers like dickens and wilkie collins they popularized it during the 19th victorian age but it is with works uh, by catherine by catherine mansfield that she basically changed she basically made it a major genre in english literature uh, dear friends her numerous stories they introduced realism now these all are qualities attributes and then psychological insight this is the most important thing about her stories that she presented her characters with a psychological insight what is going into the mind of the character it is her main focus in the story the external action is not so important as the internal action then social anxiety dear friends she was writing at a time when it was lot of things going on from socially politically and even in the economic zone so all kind of social anxiety it is these things made her stories very different from traditional english stories uh, by writers like dickens or wilkie collins and other writers that is why she is known as a pioneer i hope you know about this word pioneer is we can say someone who starts who basically makes a new way into something now though she has written many stories and her life span is also not a very long one but even in this brief life span her best known collection of short stories is the garden party now this in this particular collection there are many stories written by uh, mansfield which become hallmark of short stories and it was published in 1922 it was just one year before her death okay now we will discuss about this very interesting and very popular story this story is basically part of curriculum in almost all western and eastern universities the name of the story is a cup of tea it was first published in the magazine story teller this is the name of a magazine in which this particular story is published you can see there are two female characters who are at the center of this story it was also published in 1922 and later appeared in her short story collection the dove's nest it is another uh, collection of story by catherine mansfield okay uh before going through the summary bahut hi simple very few uh, lines ke andar let's talk about this story what is it about it is about a rich lady meets a poor girl just like a fairy tale story second part is in this particular thing the rich lady throws the poor girl a pleasant surprise many of you have heard about cinderella uh, story or uh, any other fairy story in which there is a godmother like character who meets and helps the poor character similarly same thing happens in this story but what happens in the end is more important the rich lady learns a life lesson now uh, this is the end part it makes this story different from traditional fairy tale stories okay uh, 
before just uh, let's have a look at the main characters of the story the major character from examination point of view from a story point of view she is the center of this particular story rosemary fell she is a rich young lady second important character is miss smith a poor girl there is a chance encounter between these two and third character which is almost we can say side character is philip who is husband to rosemary now let's talk about let's see the basic summary of this story so that you can get the idea what is this story all about rosemary fell uh, in the very beginning of the story we are told that she is a very wealthy woman who belongs to the elite class so she is one of those few uh, class in the england english society who has lot of money to spend she is famous in the town as a lady of great taste you can see i have put this term into inverted comma because taste is considered to be a defining character of a elite society you have rich taste you are appreciated you are popular now these lines from the story she is brilliant extremely modern exquisitely well dressed amazingly well read in the newest of the new books these are some of the features which basically characterize the taste in the rich class then we have uh, basically the narrator highlights her popularity in her circle of friends if you are rich if you are wealthy if you have good taste obviously you have a circle of friends and how her parties are always look at this idiom talk of the town it's a very popular idiom talk of the town what is the meaning of talk of the town talk of the town a thing about which everybody talks about uh, continuously she invites all sort of important people and where they all meet and share their exotic adventures there are artists there are important vips they all gather to her parties so all these things are explained in the first part of the story the reader is then told about her wealth her capability of spending money as she likes without giving a thought so she is a spendthrift child or we can say she wastes a lot of money because on an impulse if she wants to uh, purchase flowers she didn't have to think about from where or how many flowers she just took a uh, we can say cab taxi and purchase whatever she wants her husband dots on her and never interferes in her extravagant spending so this is one of the characteristic feature of rosemary's character that she is always very much spending her money one winter afternoon rosemary goes for shopping in one of her favorite shop that is an antique shop now what is an antique shop uh, you can see have an idea looking at this diagram that an antique shop is a shop in which uh, items uh, belonging to luxury belonging to old class they are sold and obviously they are very highly costed so it is not uh, for everyone's approach and then what happens the shopkeeper very well knows that she is able to spend he knows her spending capacity and then he tries to flatter her praising her taste once again oh ma'am only you can purchase, you can understand the value of this thing oh ma'am i am very fortunate that you come to this shop all these things so that uh, he can flatter her vanity now what happens this time the item he kept for her exclusively this time is an enamel box with some carvings on it there is a little box and there are cherubs and beautiful carvings and he presents it to uh, this uh, lady rosemary and tells him that ma'am i have um, disclosed this item to no one it is exclusively for you and then rosemary instantly falls in love with the uh, beautiful piece of art she basically wants to purchase it however when she inquires about the price it is a little high even for her you can understand how much it have costed with a disappointed heart she asks the shopkeeper to keep the piece for her she couldn't uh, get it because she is even she is feeling a little uncomfortable paying so much money for this little piece of art now not able to 
buy the expensive item rosemary is feeling a little sad because it is one of those rare times when she is not able to purchase what she wants as she comes out of the shop rain starts this is one of psychological trick by the writer the atmosphere is basically uh, we can say telescoped into her heart and weather is also sharing her state of mind she feels the bitter cold and decides to quickly reach her home to have a warm cup of tea to make her comfortable because she feels that uh, she is has some kind of failure disappointment today just as she is about to take her car she finds a poor girl standing near her and asking in a sigh like voice now this is uh, something uh, she never experiences there is a girl and she is tugging her and asking ma'am may I speak to you a moment obviously Rosemary is startled and surprised when the girl says she needs money for a cup of tea and from this particular thing we have the title of the story a cup of tea no Rosemary is astounded surprised she can't imagine that there can be person in this world who do not have money even for a cup of tea she can't believe her ears and that a person can be so poor that she he or she doesn't have the money to buy a single cup of tea and thinking of this suddenly an idea struck her fancy now what is this idea the she basically thinks of this meeting as a chance to show the girl that fancy things that happen in novels or movies which we saw robin hood cinderella and other things they may also happen in real life too and this is an opportunity about which she can later boast about in her parties a sort of exotic adventure she can tell her important friends how she picked up a girl how she thrown her a pleasant surprise acting on her whim this is a sort of a whim what is a whim whim is a sudden idea without any logic the she asked the girl to come with her at her home and have tea uh, now you can understand you can imagine what would be the reaction of the girl she naturally feels shocked because she is uh, quite habitual to to be discarded insulted thrown away but this lady instead of doing all these things even without paying any money she is inviting uh, this poor girl to her home she is thinking lady is either making fun of her or would take her to a police station now <clears throat> rosemary convinces her that why you are feeling so worried why you are feeling so afraid and she convinces her to join her and the girl is still she has some hesitation in her mind she sits in the car with rosemary actually what is going on rosemary mind is that she wants to show her that fairy figures uh, cinderella uh, uh, fairy mothers or we can say godmothers they really exist and all rich people they are not evil minded and she reassures her that she will treat her like a sister as they reach the big house rosemary is feeling very excited she is at the brink of success of her experiment and invites the poor girl to her luxurious bedroom the girl is in awe she is dazed little frightened she has never seen this linen sofa furniture all these fancy items and she is basically uh, very we can say petrified with fear and excitement then rosemary helps the girl with her wet coat and her wet coat ahead the girl once again asks ma'am i don't need anything i just need one cup of tea to give me some uh, refreshment uh, because she is feeling bitter cold rosemary suddenly realizes that she is so thoughtless she is so careless she haven't thought about this and she quickly orders for the tea table to be arranged once the, she tries her best to make the girl feel cozy she talks about sisterhood that we both are sisters what if i belong to the rich class you belong to the poor class and the girl breaks down in tears when rosemary inquires about when did you have the last meal and rosemary really genuine pity uh, for her abject condition 
T arrives and Rosemary reassures her that she would be taken care of. The girl feel, uh, is now feeling better and she takes two or three uh, 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 cups of tea regularly. Then what happens? Rosemary is about to begin the conversation when uh, the door suddenly opens and her husband Philip enters. This is now you can say the climax of the story. Philip enters there and uh, he is surprised to see that there is another person a guest a girl is sitting there he observes girl's hat coat he asks Rosemary to meet him in the library for a moment uh, then Philip asks his wife about the girl that who is this girl why she has come here Rosemary explains the circumstances under which she has brought the girl home Rosemary in exalted voice inform Philip's she wants to show the girl how rich people People are not always evil this is her experiment and then what happens Phillips realizes okay he says that okay this is over you have done good but uh, now you should uh, make her go but uh, in vain Rosemary is adamant to carry on her experiment so Ro Philip had another trick in his hand at the end of conversation Philip makes a subtle remark a dropping of the hand about the prettiness of the girl this is now dear friends the climax the uh, course changes of the story suddenly this remark this comes like a jolt it is a shock to rosemary she is not able to digest a compliment for another lady by her husband on her face her feminine jealousy she leaves philip and instead of the girl going to the room with the girl she goes to her own bedroom now friends rosemary is now thinking about the compliment her husband gave to the girl she is not able to digest it she can't believe that she can be such knave that she allowed a girl to come into her own home in front of her husband she first decide to write a check uh, then takes out five pound notes then puts two back and goes outside and we are coming to the end of the story after half an hour she once again enters the library informs philip that the girl whose name was mrs smith she has gone now Rosemary has freshened up her makeup. She asks Philip in an intimate tone if he likes her. Obviously, uh, Philip's uh, answers in positive. She continues to talk in a pretty cajoling manner. Tells Philip's about the costly box. Philip's allows her to buy it. Still, the real thought that pesters, that troubles her, is something else. And at last, the last line of the story is she asks Philip am i pretty now you can understand the thing which was bothering her which was troubling her that philip has praised some another lady in front of her that is why she has remade up herself and the doubt she wants to clear am i pretty or ac actually she want to ask am i more pretty than the girl so friends, this was the story. The story highlights. This is the main topic. Feminine jealousy with a very delicate handling. Rosemary wants to show the poor girl her large heartedness. Once her jealousy is active because of the compliment of her husband, all her noble intention to show the girl her large heartedness, it they vanishes. She becomes eager to get the same compliment from her husband. And the story writer is able to show our inner insight securities how do we feel insecure when someone praises in front of us for then the, it forces us to do things as rosemary sends away the girl not wanting her anymore as a rival in her husband's presence okay dear friends this is the last slide and key points which you can remember for examination point of view one is character of rosemary the change it uh, basically goes to change in rosemary attitude after the compliment of her her husband use of irony by the writer and the theme of jealousies these are the sum of points which you have to pay focus on remember for your examination point of view that's all for today thank you dear friends